All right, welcome to Adobe Photoshop 2024. If you've ever watched any of my tutorials, my tutorials follow what I teach in a college Photoshop program. So these are linear. So we're gonna start at the beginning and we're gonna move and progress through the program. It is your benefit to do this step by step and not move on to the next step until you've learned it. Now, a lot of people don't like to learn like that. So I get lots of comments and people say, hey, just show me what to do. Well, the reason I don't just show you what to do is because that supplemental information is helpful and I use it for my students because my students follow these videos. Now, the first thing that we're gonna have to do with Photoshop is set it up correctly. You can't just open it up and start working. There are specific settings that you're gonna need and some that you don't need but we're gonna kind of walk through and I'm gonna show you what the preferences are and then what you need to set up in both Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw before you start. All right, so let's go on up here to Photoshop and I'm working on a Mac, so if it's a little bit different, that's the difference. So we're gonna go up here to General and you'll notice and K that we see up here. That's the quick key. If you ever see a letter or anything to the right of something in Photoshop, that is the quick key for it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I will zoom in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. But this starts off with just a general interface. And go ahead and feel free to stop this video at any time. I'm not going to cover every little thing that's in here. A lot of this stuff is default. Everything on here is basically default um, on the way this is set up. Some of these things like use legacy free transform, there used to be a way that you use Photoshop. So if you wanted to keep the proportions, you had to hold shift. Now you don't have to hold shift. If you wanna use the old way, you would click this. But most people are learning and so there's no sense in clicking some of this stuff because they're learning it from the beginning so they won't even know the old way. So let's go to interface. Interface is just the way it looks. It's color theme. So you can click if you want a dark, a gray, a lighter gray or a white. All this stuff is just how it looks, all right? So I have mine on the gray one. We're gonna go ahead, leave that and slip on over to workspace. There's nothing that I've changed. Everything here is the default, so don't feel that you need to change your workspace. Now in my preferences, most of my tools are by default, but if you wanted to use the zoom with a scroll wheel, so if you wanted to be able to zoom with your scroll wheel, you would check this little button and it would do it. I do it a different way, the native way in Photoshop, which you will learn later. So let's go on over to history. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and skip this because there's nothing we're really using in it. The next thing are your file save options. Now, one thing that I have changed is right here where it says enable legacy save as. Now, if you do save as, it will not let you save as a JPEG file. But if you click that little box, it will let you save as a JPEG. They switched it so it's save as a copy. There's a reason for it. We're not gonna get into it right now, but that is one box that I do have checked. So if you want to use save as, you'll need this to be able to save as a JPEG. It will let you save as a TIFF, a PSD, and a couple other file formats, just not a JPEG. So here we have some other information. It's just basic. Right here, we also have camera raw preferences. So we can go ahead and click on this for right now because the one that we want to go into is workflow. And so you're going to find out that color management is important in photography. I'm working in the color space of Adobe RGB 1998 and more importantly, 16 bits per channel. I've also changed the resolution to 300 instead of 240. And that's because most printing options use 300. Nothing else I am gonna use here. Um, there are some other options here. You can look at them if you'd like. All right, one is file handling. One thing that people get into, I don't use DNG, but they don't like these XMP files and you can embed the XMP in a DNG file, which we'll get into in another program. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. That set up the camera raw preferences. Next, we have export. This is just for a quick export, so when you do export, you wanna to convert to an sRGB because the web color space is sRGB, not what I was using, which is Adobe RGB. Right here, we have performance. So depending on your computer, you wanna allocate as much memory as you can to Photoshop, it is a pig. So the more you can use, the better off and more efficient it's gonna be. Also, I have this little box ticked to use my graphics processor. 
You don't use a graphics processor a ton in Photoshop. You actually use it more in Lightroom. And I had, do have a separate one. So if I do need to do it, I can click that and it can render it. Right here, we do have history states, and this is gonna be dependent on what you do. So if you're just doing basic photography and adjustments, you're usually not gonna make more than 50 adjustments. If you're doing really complicated things and you want it to remember all those different steps, you can increase this, but this will tax your memory, so you need to pay attention to what you're doing. So if you want to do more history states, and what this means is, as you're making adjustments, it saves those adjustments and you can go back in time. But once you get past 50, you start losing them. So if you do something with 250 adjustments, you might wanna go ahead and do this. And you might need to increase your cache size if it's slowing your computer down. Image processing right here. So this is newer because we have all this new AI stuff and the AI actually works better when using the cloud. You'll notice instead of using device, I have it on cloud because it's more accurate. So here I've just switched it to more stable instead of faster. Scratch disk. So I do not advise anyone to save files to the internal hard drive on their computer because you'll fill it up too fast. You need to have external hard drives. Don't do that. Well, if you don't have a lot of internal memory, what you can do for your scratch space is allocate scratch space to a different hard drive. So you can see I've got some other hard drives here. I could click it and set up and allow my computer to use the scratch space on those different computers. In my case, all I use my computer for is my app. So I've got plenty of space. It's not gonna be a big deal. So I have mine on my internal drive. Cursors, if you wanna change the way they look, you can do that. Transparency, that's just an area of an image that has nothing in it. What it's gonna look like is this little box right here. Next, we have units and rulers. And you can set this up how you want to work. And in my case, I usually use pixels. So I have mine set up for pixels. Sometimes I'll have it set up for centimeters. Sometimes I'll have it set up for inches. It really kind of depends on what I'm doing. So you'll notice right here, print resolution, 300 pixels inch screen resolution it has it 72 look screen resolution i don't use ever i do by pixels and it's a fixed dimension so whatever you put in this number here is fine because it doesn't affect anything all right so grids these are just the different colors that they'll use and we'll use grids and guidelines and stuff like that so grid is usually a dotted line and guidelines are usually blue but it's just setting the colors. You can put any color you want. It doesn't make a difference. Next thing I have is plugins. This is all default stuff. I haven't changed anything. We've got type. This is another one. It's all default. I haven't changed anything. 3D, they keep saying they're gonna get rid of 3D. I don't use 3D, so I don't have any settings here. Um, you can just leave them as default. Enhanced controls, I don't have the touch bar. I'm on an iMac, so I don't need to set that. Technology previews, so you do want to enable um, preserve details too, which is a good upscaling program. There's also a good one inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Roll. So those are the general preferences. We'll go ahead and click that off. The next thing that we need to set up is more important. We're gonna go to edit, and then we're gonna scroll down right here to color settings, all right? And so we're gonna set up the color settings or color management inside Photoshop. So Photoshop needs to know how you want it to manage the color. Right here, we have working spaces. And so when you open an image, that's your working space color management policies. This is just telling it what to do. So in my case, I have mine set up as Adobe RGB. There's different color profiles and each color profile has a color gamut that it manages. Profoto is the largest, sRGB is the web and kind of the medium in between is Adobe. Look, your eye really can't see much outside of the Adobe RGB color space. This is what I use. If you wanna use something different, feel free. I'm using the default for CMYK because I really don't work in CMYK. Change your gray to gray gamma 2.2. That's going to be the largest. 
I don't use spot, so I just leave it at the dot gain. Color management policies. Now what this means is if you open up an image, right, and it has a different color profile or it doesn't have one, what do you want it to do? Well, if it's in RGB, I want it to convert to the working RGB, which is this Adobe 98. Same thing for CMYK and grayscale. Now, a lot of times when I'm teaching, I turn these on so students or in these tutorials can see what's happening. Otherwise, it just does it in the background and you don't notice, so we're gonna go ahead and leave those checked. So what's gonna happen is if it comes up with a different color profile and it says, do you wanna to switch to the working Adobe, it will pop up in a little window and we'll be able to see that. So this is important, make sure that you screenshot this and this is a good starter if you don't have any clue what's going on. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So that's it for the preferences and setup of Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those below. If you could give us a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And don't forget to subscribe.